The views expressed are not necessarily those of KSCJ and Powell Broadcasting Company. This program is not intended to replace the advice of doctors or other clinical providers. Consult with your practitioner to ensure the proper course of action for you. Welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well on AM 1360 FM 94.9 KSCJ. This program is dedicated to your mental health wellness and brought to you by Family Services, a United Way partner agency. Here's your host, Art Silva. Good morning, Siouxland, and welcome to this week's edition of When Things Aren't Going Well. This show is dedicated to your mental wellness and how you can help yourself navigate the daily highway of life. We hope to educate and motivate you to help improve your mental wellness environment. I'm Art Silva, and our show is brought to you by Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, a United Way partner agency serving the Siouxland community. Joining me today is my colleague and co-host, Brenda Geisinger, Chief Operating Officer at Boys and Girls Home and Family Services. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning. And how are you today? I'm good, and you? Uh, Great. I'm looking forward to our show today. We have a great show for everyone, so um, would you mind introducing our guest and our topic? Absolutely. So today we have with us Christy Spicer, who has been with us numerous times. She is a therapist at Family Services, also a certified play therapist. And today we are going to talk about self-confidence. It's an important topic and it's a little bit different than having self-worth or self-esteem. So we're going to kind of delineate that difference and really talk about loving yourself, accepting yourself, and how to have self confidence. Well, this sounds great. Good morning, Christy, and welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Sounds like an interesting topic, so let's get busy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think about self-confidence and having that feeling of, um, you know, trust in your own abilities um, and to know that you have good qualities about yourself and that your your judgment of yourself and um, and what decisions you make are also really positive. And I think that we all have good traits about us. And I know sometimes we can judge other people and look towards other people. And I think even in those times, if we pause, even if we've made a mistake too, or someone else has made a mistake, it doesn't have to define them. It doesn't have to define you, that you have good things about yourself. And I think having good and strong self-confidence um, will help you recognize that even when things aren't going well for you. Well, it sounds like a self, self-worth, self-confidence is kind of like an attitude that you develop. So um, it, it often is confused with self-esteem. Let's clear that up before we go any further. Yeah, I mean, I think that they can overlap at times, but self-esteem really comes from relying on on those external factors, such as successes and achievements to define your worth um, and, you know, how confident you feel. Whereas, you know, that self-confidence, self-worth is more about how you feel about yourself on the inside. Well, how do we uh, how do we how do we get self-confidence? Is it just automatic? Are you born with it? I certainly think so. You know, if you think about kids and you watch them, like they they all have it, right? That they are out there, they're trying new things. And so I think we all have it when we um, are born. Um, and then, you know, we can also gain it from watching other people. So I think adults and children's lives, I think other humans in adults' lives, other adults matter too, because we, we get a lot from other people and those relationships are really important um, to helping develop it. I think also with self-confidence, everybody has an inner passion, kind of what is my purpose, what am I about, and knowing their beliefs and values and really feeling okay with that and accepting yourself and loving yourself and where you're at in the world and how you relate to people and what what are you going to do, where are you at with things. That makes it so much better when you're in a group of people that think alike. Because I could see where you could come into a group and everything and how you look at things and you feel pretty confident about yourself. No one else in there agrees with you. And Mm so um, how does that impact you? Yeah, I mean, I think when you're in a group and you have a differing opinion, like if you have good self-confidence, you're going to be able to say, I don't agree with you. Right. And here's why. And hopefully other people in the group also have good self-confidence because then you can engage in that dialogue with each other about about the topic, whatever it might be, and then still recognize that it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It doesn't mean that you're bad. It just means that you have a different opinion and being able to state it and have others hear it. I think is just it's a good thing to be able to do 
Uh, you're listening to When Things Aren't Going Well. I'm Art Silva, along with Brenda Geisinger and Christy Spicer from Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, and we're discussing self-confidence today. Uh, Christy, let me ask you, what are the four elements that you would find uh, that is associated with self-confidence and feeling good about yourself? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we've kind of gone back and forth with self-confidence, self-worth, and they kind of like overlap. You got some similarities with that. We also have self-esteem that we're dealing with too. But, you know, I think about, we need to think, the four elements are our abilities. So being able to think about what we are able to do, um, not always what we're not able to do, focusing on the abilities that we have. The effort we put in, I think, is really important. It's not always what you achieve. It's about what effort you put into it. Um, And so did I work hard on that? You know, I talk with um, teenagers and kids in therapy sometimes who have a hard time with academic work, you know, their schoolwork. It doesn't come easy for everybody. And I oftentimes encourage them to think about how much effort did you put in and feel good about yourself about the effort, not always the, the grade, the, pro- the grade, or the product, <laughs> right? Because things aren't always going to be perfect for you. You know, we can also think about performance, and so it is about like that. I think that's a part of that effort. Performance is that you know, how did I act? What did I do? And then you know, thinking about that self worth component of you know being good enough and that I'm worthy of love from other people and belonging, you know, that I do belong with others. Um, and, you know, knowing that inside of yourself, um, because I think the, the more we all like ourselves, right, or can even say that we love ourselves or love certain parts of ourselves. Um, and if you can't get there, right, because that that's awesome if we can get there. But can we accept ourselves that we are the way that we are? And if you can't get there, can you even just be neutral about yourself? And I think that that can lead to a person just feeling a little more content, right? Maybe I'm not the best. OK, right. I, I can be neutral, too. Um, and that can still help you feel good. Brenda, let me ask you about the children in residence. Uh do they have problems along these lines of self-confidence and um, feeling good about themselves? Absolutely. I think a lot of the kids that we work with really struggle with, you know, the trauma they've experienced and where do they fit in, feeling maybe hopeless or lost and not worthy, and reaching them to that place of you're okay. And you trying and you asking for help does not make you a bad person. And we all have worth in teaching them how to love themselves so they can then love others. And that's a process and it's a journey. But knowing that everybody matters is really important and a message that we like to teach and preach. You know, really, the old saying goes, you got to love yourself before you can love anybody else. And boy, that certainly applies here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me ask you, um, where do we get this from? Uh, what if you are your only child in a family? You don't have the advantage of learning from your other siblings as you're alone. Uh, what if your mom and pop are just two different kind of personalities? Where do you get your, where do you get your self-confidence? What is it? You go to piano lessons or something? What, is, what happens? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to kind of what we had talked about before. Like, what are your abilities? You know, and so and being able to focus on that. Um, you know, and I think everyone needs kind of that cheerleader in their life and it's okay to go looking for it sometimes you know kids can go looking for that is it a teacher is it another parent is it a grandparent there's just a lot of people around and I think adults it's the same look for that cheerleader maybe it's a mentor that you know you can connect with or a good friend that can help you see your abilities you know there's lots of different ways that we can have people help us see our own abilities. I think it's also the self-dialogue. You know, what do you tell yourself and how you've reinforced that? You know, I'm willing to try, I got this, or a good effort, and having those positive affirmations with yourself. But also self-reflection, you know, ooh, ooh, I bombed that one. What can I do differently? Mm -hmm. And being honest and vulnerable to yourself and really taking a moment to how can I improve or what is my strength? I shouldn't be doing that anymore. So it's that positive attitude, internal dialogue. I think the other thing, too, I think about is, you know, working towards the ability to accept criticism Mm -hmm. from yourself or from other people. And and criticism can be really hard, you know, and it can be a simple like you didn't 
put away something right in your home, right? Like that's criticism. And it can be bigger job performance or something like that. But if you're in a position where you can say, okay, I can take this criticism, I can think about it, I can then use that to see where my abilities are and help strengthen those, that's going to set you on a path to increase your self-confidence and then also to really exceed and feel good about where you're heading. Well, this is all good, and uh, we're going to come back to this discussion on the second half of our show. So we're coming up on our break, so continue, continue to enjoy the dawn of another beautiful day. We'll be right back with more of When Things Aren't Going Well right here on 1360 AM, 90.9 FM, KSCJ. Let's face it, it happens to all of us. However, the pandemic has compounded all of our lives and activities. Even the simplest tasks seem harder. Hi, I'm Brenda Geisinger, the Chief Operating Officer at the Boys and Girls Home and Family Services. Family Services is a United Way partner agency serving children and families of our community, and we're here to help. If you'd like to learn more about Family Services, please contact us via email, website, Facebook, or phone Mary Pickens. At Family Services, we change lives. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well on KSCJ. Here's Art Silva. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well. I'm Art Silva along with Brenda Geisinger and our guest Christy Spicer. So let's continue our discussion on self-worth. So are there, do we have mentors? Uh, <clears throat> we look at children as they grow up. Uh, a parent can be very helpful in your self-worth and your confidence. Uh, you can find a teacher. You can find a coach in high school. As we go through life, are there mentors that help us with our with our self confidence? Yeah, I mean, I think every um, adult that a child has the opportunity to interact with has a chance to to be that shining light for them. And you know, I think um, some of the things that adults can do to help do that, I think, is important to think about, like showing kids that they are good good enough just for being, not even for what they did, but just because they are who they are. They they are the person that they are, and that makes them good enough no matter what. I think providing unconditional love and positive regard to children. Doesn't matter what they've done. Doesn't matter how mad you got because of their behavior. You always need to come back to that. I love you. You're important to me. And it doesn't matter the choices that you make. And then, you know, I think we have as adults opportunities to give children and adolescents to opportunities to experience success. Don't set them up for failure. You know, there are times when we often ask kids, teenagers included, to do things that are a little bit out of their reach. And sometimes that's good. You know, we can push them forward, right? But also balance that out with things that you know that they are going to be able to nail, right? That they're going to feel good about, you're going to feel good about and everyone can experience that joy that comes from a job well done let me ask you a question we always talk about uh, uh, participation awards Uh, how do you feel about (laughs) kids getting participation awards I think sometimes it's good if you have a little bit of struggle going on with kids not wanting to jump in but it can be used to the excess everything you know in moderation or acknowledgement Um, but the focus really should be on the the moment and how they are participating. Are they enjoying it? Are they not? And where are they at? Um, not the fact that they're just showing up. But that's mm-hmm. in a personal opinion. <laughs> you know, I think it's kind of a tricky thing because I think, you know, we talked about how, you know, we want to send the message to kids that they are good just because they are, right? And so I do think that maybe there's some time to think about when do we have kids become competitive as well, right? When When is it good to have that competitive and organized sports, so participation awards? Like, you know, when is that good for a child to have? And may it have to also really know your own kid, you know, as to when to, to do that, right? Are you going to be in the really competitive soccer league or are you going to be in the rec league? And different kids need different things, and that's okay. And it's not doesn't always have to be about the competition. I think it can be about the participation. I think a, a good coach wouldn't just hand the medal and say, thanks for showing up. I think that they would say, thanks for showing up, and you run really well. 
right? Or I saw your effort on the field, or I noticed that you were always early to practice, right? Whatever it is, I think that builds up character more than just, oh, good, you were a part of the team. Here's your medal. <laughs> you know, you talk about self confidence. We go to some athletes that are really competitive and very confident. And I'll go to Michael Jordan. And just a, a, as, a, as a basketball player, um, these people like Michael Jordan and Larry Bird, they make other players, other people around them look better mm -hmm. because of their confidence. So can confidence spread over to a group and boy, we're all going in the same direction and feeling pretty strong about ourselves? Oh, I think that's very, very true. I mean, even in a meeting, when someone walks in a room that is very self-confident, the whole room dynamic changes. So being present and sure of yourself and loving yourself, not being arrogant, but just really confident can really make a difference in the dynamics and the engagement you have in relationships. Well, let's talk about the things that we do or things that happen to people that break this self-confidence down. Uh, Chris, do you want to lead us that way? Yeah, you know, I think that um, people can get really criti critical towards themselves and also receive a lot of criticism towards other people. And so I think while we need to work on being able to accept it, also recognizing if we're being too critical towards others that we want to help build up. And so that excessive criticism from trusted people matters. Um, so I think that's one way we lose it. If we are trying, if we limit a person too much, that can also um, not help with it, help with self-confidence either. So it's, you know, maybe that time when um, parents don't let kids try new things because they're afraid that the child won't be able to succeed at it instead of saying, Let's give it a shot. Let's see how you do. I'm here to help you, right? That's a really different experience for a child. And um, so that can be one thing. I think peers with adolescents especially, but even some elementary um, kids too, um, if they are feeling that rejection from peers or are made fun of, we can get into bullying and things like that as well, I think can really be detrimental. Um, you know, I think we also have this... You know, you talked about some of those pro athletes and their confidence and how we see them. And sometimes media can give us this ideal, which sometimes that helps people rise up to it. But at the same time can have some people that go, I will never be able to be like that. And so how do we help people sort of navigate through what is real, so to speak, with people that they may see in the media um, and also recognizing that even a really confident person like on the basketball court might not be a, ba a confident person in all aspects of their life. And so there might be some times when when that's different. Um, trauma can be a part of it, too. When people have bad things happen to them, that can really be tough for their confidence level um, and impact that. And then I think it's important to recognize that we have some systemic um, discrimination in our culture and that for um, some groups of people can also really impact their their confidence level, too. So I think that there's lots of different things that can come into play as far as when a person might kind of lose some confidence um, or not be able to gain it in the same way as others. Um, so there's just lots of different things to keep in mind. That's really interesting because when you when you kind of think about it, um, some people just have a way of answering or talking back that can be very demoralizing. Uh, and I know especially with children. And when you talked about limiting children's <clears throat> exploration, I think that's extremely important that they can kind of find their own little way, direction. They may like this, they may like that, they may like this, and you're going to support it, uh, whatever it takes to do that. So I can see where sometimes parents, based upon their own experience, pass it on to the kids mm -hmm. and then these kids come up they're just they're just brand spanking new and the conditioning sets in at a very very early age um do you deal with that at all of restoring self-confidence 
some stories there that you can some examples? Yeah, you know, I think that there's lots of times when I see individuals, children and adults, um, that have had difficult things happen in their lives, and it has impacted the, how they think about themselves and their confidence. And um, so we talk about that. So sometimes, you know, Brenda had mentioned earlier in the show about what are they saying to each other? What is that internal narrative? And so sometimes we have to get to that. Right. So are they thinking that they shouldn't take risks and that was something maybe that was communicated to them and that's impacting them going and feeling that they can try new things and that's part of their confidence issue. Um, So, you know, we really just kind of get in there and everybody's different as to what might be impacting that. But we'll get into that conversation and try to figure some of that out and then look for the solution that is going to fit that individual. It's not a one size fits all. Just like building self-confidence isn't a one-size-fits-all process either, Um, you know, initially. The same thing goes when we're trying to repair. Well, it's never too late to work on your self-confidence. Every day, try something new that you feel good about, that you know your abilities kick in, Mm -hmm. you know you can do this. Uh, I wish I could throw a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. (laughs) Uh, They have a lot of confidence there. But, you know, this has been really interesting, Christy, and I want to thank you uh, for sharing with us today. We're coming up on the end of our show, and every week we try to end our show with a little humor. Uh, humor is good for the soul. So here's our weekly joke for you. What did the doctor say to the patient who refused stitches? Suture yourself. <laughs> okay, your doctors might get that. Okay, thanks, Brenda. Thanks, Christy. And also, thanks to our listening audience. Shout out to Pat and Dick Collins for 58 years of marital bliss. Also, Sue Lilla celebrating her 80th birthday. We'll be back next Saturday morning at 7 a.m. right here at 1360 a.m. 94.9 FM, KSCJ, when our topic will be children and school stress. Boys and Girls Home and Family Service is a great place to work, and we have immediate openings for full and part-time positions. Call our H-Style department at 293-4700. Don't forget to do your homework this week and go out and have a good laugh. It's good for the soul. Have a great week, and may the sun shine on you. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again, happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then, happy trails to you. Till we meet again. For more information on the services provided by Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, see them online at Boys and Girls Home iowa.org or you can call 712-293-4700 to get more information about family services residential treatment the opportunity school the siouxland family center and more at boys and girls home and family services we change lives we change lives we change lives